Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful night. It's raining and it kind of feels fit in considering what just happened. So Rooster Teeth is sh- being shut down by Warner-, Warner Bros. Discovery, but the podcast network will continue. Now Rooster Teeth defined by a lot of people growing up. I remember my junior high school days, my god I'm old, there would be Rooster Teeth box sets in GameStop. It was one of the first machinimas that really hit mainstream. A lot of people loved the show. I would watch it on my breaks during college. And it was definitely one of those shows that just took off. It was one of the most incredible, just like a bunch of guys coming together and just creating a show for fun. The company then ballooned and eventually expanded to Achievement Hunter, Podcast, a lot of things. Ruby, there was, and then the inclusion of Monty Ohm who did the incredible Haloroid uh, mini uh, show where Master Chief and Samus would team up and then there was also Dead Fantasy. Unfortunately, he passed away because of an allergic reaction during the doctor's visit, which is unfortunate. And uh, yeah, but Rooster Teeth has had a lot of ups, but things started to crash when a lot of the company started to see woes. So you can see here a lot of people are mourning the death of Rooster Teeth going through the years of this incredible company. But yeah, like I stated, the company has been on a downhill. As you see here, 9 million subs and it could barely break 100k on their views, which is very damning. Some of them don't even get 10,000 views which I covered and a lot of people I've covered, but a lot of people were excited for the new episodes of Camp Camp, which I assume is also being canceled, which is unfortunate. Camp Camp was also a very popular show that people enjoyed. I liked it too. But then again, a lot of things were happening, such as founders were leaving the company, such as Bernie Burns, who left. Joel also left. And well, I think he was fired because of political differences, but There were a lot of founders within the company that left and then Achievement Hunter was shut down which was another major blow. Achievement Hunter was another very subdivision of Rooster Teeth that was extremely popular. Jeff and Jack started it as just like Achievement Guides, then it ballooned to Ray, Michael, Lindsay, um, who else, Ryan. Uh, We have to talk about the controversies there between Ryan and how he was basically cheating on his wife and it was not pleasant. Then they also had Funhouse which dissolved as well and then we found out Adam Kovic was doing the same thing and that also wasn't pleasant so a lot of blows to the company's image. Not to mention the whole um, ex-employees coming out for harassment allegations, not being paid. Uh, Apparently they were working extensive hours and again, overtime, there was a lot of um, controversies around the lead animator who took over after Monty Ohm's unfortunate passing, Gray Haddock. I met the guy several times. He seemed like a very nice person. But uh, yeah, it was just like, I'll leave this article posted below and you can read it. I've gone through this before. But yeah, you can see that the company took a major downhill tread after founders started leaving, the core achievement hunter people started leaving, like Ray, Michael, all of them just started going away. And I th- let's look at their most popular video. Their most popular video was the Angry Birds movie trailer, 26 million views, 13 million. So they... Like, it's just not been a really good situation. Oh my god. I remember when the first episode of the Minecraft Let's Play dropped. My god. This was something I looked forward to every Friday. Oh god. But, yeah. And now the company is officially being shut down. A pioneer in digital content creation is going away. Rusatita subsidiary of Warner Bros. Discovery Global Streaming and Interactive Entertainment announced this morning that it ceased in operations after 21 years. The process starts today and is expected to take several, several months. Now, I just find it uh, very funny that Warner Bros. like uh, is doing all these cuts, but then they're doubling down on live service games. I did a video yesterday about how they acknowledged Suicide Squad was a major flop and now they're trying to double and triple down on live service games because they say they want that recurrent payment model and that billion dollar model that you find in games like Genshin Impact, Fortnite, I think Apex Legends is a billion dollar IP but it definitely makes bank and then they were like oh that game that sold 22 million copies yeah let's forget that that was just a one and done game we can't possibly make our all the money uh we can't make all the money with that type of game idea. A good game that sells millions upon millions of copies that even beat Call of Duty? Fuck that. I know I went on a tangent, but that was just so stupid when I read that article. I'm sure <laughs> it was just so stupid. 
It's with a heavy heart I announced that Rooster Teeth is shutting down due to challenges facing digital media resulting from fundamental shifts in consumer behavior and monetization across platforms, advertising, and patronage, Levin said in an email. You can read it in full below. Honestly, yeah, you, Rooster Teeth really pushed their first membership very heavily, which allowed the people to add free experiences on their website along with um, certain bonuses like uh, getting their content first, which... They also weren't delivering on. I read on Reddit. That I couldn't find the post that people weren't getting their first membership content. Uh, the same, like, uh, they weren't getting priority access. They were delivering it on the buck. They were delivering it unanimously among all the community. And a lot of people were saying, then why am I paying for this membership? It also didn't help that they took off a lot of the content that was on their web's, uh, YouTube page. Like, they took down the Red vs. Blue series and a lot of other stuff, so you had to go to their website, which back in the day, uh, God, I feel old, it was okay because you would go to the Rooster Teeth website and watch it there because YouTube was just an infancy, and it, uh, YouTube was just starting out. I'm sorry, I slur. I'm trying to get better at pronouncing words on the fly. I don't script this stuff out anymore. I try to do it on the fly. But, yeah, it... They start taking down their content from their YouTube page and putting it on their website to push people to their website so they can get a bigger bulk of the ad revenue, which makes sense. But a lot of people were unhappy because nowadays YouTube is the default platform that people go for their video sharing. News organizations know this. Movie makers know this. You have to be on YouTube. You just have to be. So that wasn't a pleasant decision. The, Ro the Roost podcast will remain in operation while... WBD evaluates outside interest in acquiring this growing asset. So they're trying to sell off the Roost pot, the Rooster Teeth podcast, it seems. There is Rooster Teeth branded content in uh, WBD pipeline, which also will stay in put, including a movie that will be released soon by Warner Brothers Home Interactive. Really? Because it seems that they've been like uh, shelving a lot of finished products, like not just the Batwoman, but the Wile E. Coyote movie. And a lot of people were upset about that because... A lot of studios were like, why would we work for you if you're just going to shelve the movie? <laughs> WBD will also will be exploring options for Rooster Teeth's catalog content and IP such as Red vs. Blue, Ruby, and Genlock. So they're definitely looking to sell all of this off and try and, I guess, recoup whatever cost they have in order to lower operational budgets. So I don't know who would buy this. I guess Crunchyroll would be, uh, Sony by extension, would Crunchyroll would probably buy it because, you know... That's the only company I can think of that would buy this stuff. Founded in 2003, Bernie Burns, Matt Hoffman, Jeff Ramsey, Jason Sarala, Gus Sarallo, and Joel Heyman, Rooster Teeth went through a series of owners including Full Screen and Otter Media and became part of WBD following the acquisition of Time Warner from AT&T. Levin noted that WBD continued its investment in our company, content, and community following the merger. WBD also continued the Rooster Teeth Digital Creators Program intended to support underrepresented talent, which had been launched by Warner Media. In an effort to boost revenue by moving consumers to sponsorship models, Rooster Teeth last fall relocated its content from YouTube to its own website. Yeah, exactly what I stated. They tried to push the Rooster Teeth first sponsorship, but unfortunately, a lot of people weren't getting their content on time. It was being delivered universally among the entire community, and a lot of people were like, then why am I paying for this? Because that was the biggest draw of that. It's like if YouTube suddenly started playing ads on YouTube Red, you'd be like, I have YouTube Red. I shouldn't be getting ads. It's kind of what's happening with Amazon as well. You paid for Amazon Prime to get ad-free content, and now you suddenly have to deal with ads. Like, uh, I don't know what the hell is wrong with that. And yeah, they relocated their content to Rooster Teeth, and that was also fell, uh, had a negative backlash. A potential sale of the company was also explored by many companies that would be interested in the brand are no longer in business as the digital entertainment space has been undergoing and under uh, precedent upheaval. I hope I said that word wrong, uh, right. Uh, God, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm in a lot of pain right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So they are trying to sell off the company, but no one wants it. And I can't really blame them. Like, what does Rooster Teeth really have going for them? You're like, yeah, if you look at their content library, they do have Red versus Blue, but a lot of people have hated Red versus Blue after the, uh, I forgot what it was. I think it was the Chorus Trilogy. The core is where um, Tucker got the meta armor and they were about to face an uh, onslaught of soldiers. I was excited for the next season because I was like, oh my god, how are they going to survive this? And they just cut to something brand new and then they started to turn it into Ruby 
And then it just became this typhoon of nonsense that didn't really make any sense or fit the aesthetic and presentation of what Red vs. Blue was. Granted, there was a trailer that came out that showed that they were retconning all of that stuff and it was basically the Alpha just running through simulations of how to survive the event. They even brought back Bernie Burns to write the final season of Red vs. Blue, but I don't know if that's going to get released or not. Tell me if you know, but yeah, it just went through a downhill spiral. Same thing for Ruby, same thing for a lot of these shows and content. You could just look at all of this stuff. I mean, Texas Mom to react to Raunchy Kids cartoon, that's literally like uh, what those react channels used to do, the kids react channels. Like they would get like people who are unaware of certain content and have them watch this stuff. It also reminds me of that Dead Space 2 trailer, if you remember that, if you're old like me, where they had like parents react to the Dead Space 2 trailer and show that your mom wouldn't like this it's just like okay monetization shifts platform algorithms advertising challenges and ebb flow of patronage all of these convergent factors have led to many closures in the industry levin noted in this memo yeah youtube is also the biggest thing right now because you're competing not it's not the same platform as it once was let me uh try and explain like right now not only with ai technology but adobe as well they have dished out a lot of features that makes editing so much easier things that would require an expert in the field is so much easier right now for anyone like literally for adobe photoshop you can remove the background for an entire image and just have that one specific part of an image with no effort whatsoever like back in the day like 10 years ago, you would need to go through Adobe classes. You would need to go through YouTube tutorials just to know how to like just um, fix every part of an image. And now Adobe does it for you. You just literally type it in and it does it for you. Same thing for Adobe Premiere Pro. There are so many features that can fix audio issues. They can fix uh, graphic issues. You just like literally it does it itself. So Back in the day when Rooster Teeth was starting out with Monty Ohm and all those great animations, almost anyone can do that to a degree right now, literally with the modern day technology. So the landscape has dramatically changed. Like how many of those SCP videos of those very deadly creatures have been sprouting up all over YouTube? It's because they use AI technology. They literally just type it in into a AI program and it does it for them like not to mention those harry potter squat in videos those very muscled videos like it's entertaining stuff but it's literally just an ai program where they just type it in and it goes forward and they put it on youtube and get a hundred thousand subs or millions of views so they're essentially trying to get the same audience that has either moved on and the new audience is now addicted to different types of content that they simply do not deliver Warner Bros. Discovery thanks Rooster Teeth for groundbreaking creators and partners and strong management team for many years of success. The company said in a statement, you're passionate and loyal fans. It's an HR statement. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So here's the memo. Oh my god, that is a lot of words that I am not going to read. Oh, here's to our final season. Through not international, it's only appropriate that the last season of Red vs. Blue coincides with us navigating this closure together. Our legacy is not just a collection of our content, but history of pixels born in screens, minds, and hearts. Rooster Teeth has made an incredible mark, in, no, an indelible mark on the media industry, and we should be proud about countless ways we pioneer business connecting creators to the dedicated community. That was a whole lot of nothing. This is so. I'm just gonna assume all of this is just like literally a mo like a giant PR statement. So, from what I think they're going to do is just they're gonna keep the team on until the final season is done, put it out, and that's it. Make whatever they can have back. So there you go. The end of a legacy. The people who pioneered digital uh, digital content, machinima, popularized it in a lot of ways. People have a lot of fond memories for is officially over and all things come to an end eventually and Rooster Teeth simply could not find a way to survive given how far they've grown, how much they expanded, they basically got way too big for their shoes and I think if they kept it like a tight-knit corporation, they just kept it at, you know, uh, maybe 10, 20 people, it would probably been a little better but when you have high production animation shows, live action shows, stuff like that it becomes very big. I mean, they had a freaking movie. I saw it. It was okay. Not that, uh, you know, it was fine. I didn't see the sequel because I saw trailers for the sequel and I was just like, 
it didn't appeal to me whatsoever but that's just me either way tell me what you think about all this it is sad to see them go but what I really hope is that they keep the videos up, just keep the channel running and just allow people to live through those legacy content even more better. Put all the content that is on the Rooster Teeth website on YouTube. Just put it on YouTube, leave it there, and let people enjoy it. I'm sure there are going to be re-uploaders of people who keep this content. There are preservation channels who just keep uh, content up for the sake of keeping it on YouTube. But in this case, I really hope they just bring back all the content to YouTube and just say, here it is, enjoy, because I think that would be a really good finale for everyone. But uh, that's it from me. Like, dislike, your choice. Bye.